Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we'll be having a look around the recent Innsmouth Livery Festival. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. OK, then, so uh, before we have a, a proper look around the dealer's room, um, I actually went up to the festival, which is in Bedford, and uh, I went up with paperback and science fiction and fantasy and horror dealer, Dorset Bob. Um, and uh, Bob and I got there quite early. There was hardly any traffic on the road, unlike when we actually uh, attempted to get home. Uh, so we got up pretty pretty sharpish. We were like the second people to turn up. Um, so we were pretty much set up within about... 15 20 minutes so i took the opportunity to have a good look through what stock bob had bought for this particular show so obviously he themed it with the horror authors yeah, the lovecraftian and uh people like that so we'll have a look through and um, he had sort of these were sort of you know not fanzines per se but you know sort of uh digests and uh books about horror um some fanzines of course there so uh I thought we'd have a little flick through these before we had a look at his uh, his actual book stock. And uh, we were in uh, like the dealer's room and that was adjacent to the main hall where there were people speaking and there were some more stalls, which we'll have a look at in a minute. There was also an upstairs area. There was a war gaming area. Uh, fantastic. Incidentally, Bob brought along a few of his uh, paperback bags. If you are after those, uh, Bob sells us at nine ninety five a hundred, and you can have up to 200 for, I think, three pounds postage which is pretty good within the uk so uh, if you are in the in need of those uh, certainly i've been buying them off amazon and they don't seem to have had any in for a long time so uh if you're after any just uh, drop bob uh, an email and you'll see bob's details in a minute and as i've gone around the show and i've looked at people's stalls i've tried to sort of zoom in on their contact details so if you see something that you fancy you could potentially go to their website and or drop them an email directly. Uh, so just bear that in mind. Some very interesting stuff here. Loads of stuff I'd never seen before because uh, horror is not my main sort of love. Uh, you know, I, I don't mind enjoying it, but I don't really collect horror related stuff. It was really interesting to see what was out there. And, uh, there was all manner of things at this particular show. Lots of authors, um, you know, self-published authors, uh, self-published comic book writers and artists as well. Here's some of Bob's uh, hardback stock, which uh, he took along as well. So this is sort of on a on an end. And trade paperbacks, of course, this is on an end of uh, end of his table, on a bookcase dedicated. And some vintage stuff as well as some more slightly more modern stuff. And as I said, we were quite lucky because we got in fairly early um, without any incident at all. So we were able to set up at our leisure, really, well before people started coming in. Parking was excellent. In fact, the venue as a whole was ideal. You could park, you know, and have, I don't know, a 50 metre less than that um, trolley load in from the car park straight to the dealer's room. It was fantastic. So here's a look through uh, Bob's stock that he bought with him. Now, Bob's stock does change. Um, his next show is going to be the London Paperback Show. So, uh, But if you see anything here, obviously he did sell about a box worth or two of actual stock on the day. But if you do spot something here um, that you quite fancy, you know, Bob has some of his stuff is in, he's got in, uh, in depth, you know, multiple copies, so you might find something... Uh, that you fancy, just drop him an email. And uh, that's the, the best way to get hold of him. Nice run of those uh, Universe Anthologies by Terry Carr. But uh, there were so many interesting books. And I don't think uh, Bob is that expensive. He's, he's known for his high grade. And uh, by far, you know, being a, you, know, you could say, a professional dealer, um, as opposed to just someone clearing out their collection, he did have a, a, you know, the best sort of table for old stock at the show. But um, there were other dealers there who had um, bits and pieces themselves. Yeah, I think it was you know, private collectors selling off their bits and pieces from what I saw. 
But yeah, we do uh, spend a fair bit of time looking through Bob's stock simply because, you know, he had the most there to really see and go through. There's his details there. Mr. Book 451 at Outlook.com. That's the easiest way to get hold of Bob. Drop him a once list if you spotted something in this that you'd like to uh, like to buy. Um, Charles Stross was there. He was obviously the guest of honour at the show. And uh, Bob brought along what stock he had and what he didn't sell. And we'll actually catch Charles at the end um, when he came round the dealer's room um, after he'd done his talks and signings and stuff. Um, he signed uh, what stock Bob had left at the end of the day. And a very nice chap he was too, very amenable. That one there was a book that ended up being in demand. And in the end, I think Bob could have sold it three times. But uh, yeah, I'm glad I pulled that one out because it's really interesting. You know, Sherlock Holmes, War of the Worlds, it's not something you, you quite expect, is it? But yeah, it ended up being quite a quite an in-demand book come the end of the day. <laughs> Some good general uh, general horror stuff there. Get your teeth stuck into. That's the reprint of that one, but four pounds for the reprint isn't bad. It's a very expensive first penguin, that one. It's you know, probably approaching 20 pounds now, maybe a bit more even. But a gold mixture of stuff. They weren't it was sort of Bob stock was grouped together, but it wasn't strictly A to Z. I mean, it was too much of a, a job to get all the boxes A to Z and they wouldn't stay A to Z either um, as people pick stuff up and uh, move it around. But stuff was selling certainly across the board. There were some great Brian Lumley pieces there. Um, a sadly missed author and many people because he was such a popular figure and he went to lots of shows people we were speaking to about him most people have met him which is fantastic um, such a, a very very popular popular guy so Bob brought along all his uh, Lumley stock I think they had to hand it's an odd uh, Ballantine, which um, I think I've got that one, so I didn't grab that one this time. And these were particularly nice. These are the uh, New English Library Dracula titles. Now, that one's 30, but these are really top grade copies. They weren't all that sort of price, some of them like 15 or 12, and that one's 12. But they are very scarce, and uh, the copies you see online are always hammered. And bulbs are pretty nice, you know, so that's reflected in the price, really. They're just not, not around in nice condition. Keep your eyes peeled for those. Another uh, amazing cover there that Bob was uh, showing me there. <laughs> And uh, Tom I'd filmed everything. The uh, the dealer's room was just starting to to fill up with uh, you see a frenzy of activity with all the other stalls being assembled, and uh, we'll go around and have a look at those in a moment. And Bob also had a little run of uh, the the more modern Weird Tales issues, and these were like four pounds a pop, which is very very good. Once again, great authors inside: Tanith Lee, um, Brian Lumley, Stephen King was in a couple of them. Um, so those were going out okay. And then um, a run of uh, Phantasmagoria from uh, Trevor Kennedy, another great, I mean, is it a magazine? It was sort of borderline, border, borderline on like a trade paperback more than anything than a magazine because there's an awful lot in there. And uh, there's some good stuff. In fact, I've got the last two issues, which I must uh, pull together into a uh, um, a video to review um, because uh, they're excellent. And I've got those sort of waiting to be filmed. Bob had quite a run of Phantasmagoria. And this is just his little display behind the table with some prints, which are quite nice. You know, some of the more uh, expensive paperbacks and what have you. I said those weird tales, just £4 each, which is a good price for those. 
a couple of signed Terry Pratchett's, a very early New English Library Strata. I think that was 30 on that one. Um, I mean, you know, it wasn't in that cover very long. This is quite, quite scarce. And Bob's got loads of uh, signed stuff in his stock. Which has been picked up over the years. There were some Polish Brian Lumley's down the bottom with some very interesting covers indeed. A couple of B formats and what have you. That necroscope there is the first British necroscope signed as well. Absolutely mint and unread, and that was 50 on that one. And then those tri trio of the Michel Pares are absolutely gorgeous from Corgi. And then these ones here, dear or Orchid Garden, they're from uh, Germany. Uh, they're from the 1920s, I believe. Incredibly rare. And they were uh, £100 each. Then uh, if you wanted to uh, seaside style, get your face uh, with all your tentacles, you had the opportunity to have a little photo shoot there. And then directly opposite us was uh, Dave uh, Bretsky and his partner. And uh, she's a writer as well. And Dave, of course, edits and, and does other bits and pieces. And... Um, we had plenty of chance to catch up. Dave's been um, a viewer and supporter of the channel for uh, many years now. So it's great to um, meet him for the first time in the flesh. Um, since this is the furthest north I've been in quite some time, uh, for a show at least. And uh, David dug those fanzines out from his loft, which in the end, um, Bob took the, the, the remainder of that stock home with him. So if you've seen anything you fancy once again. Just uh, have a look, and there is Dave and his partner. And there's her rather incredible tentacle-themed shawl. <laughs> These are quite interesting. These were a bit like um, photo novels, um, but they were for classic horror movies. And then the stills have been taken, sort of enhanced, and uh, speech balloons and text added. Oh, very, very clever. Really slick production as well. Not overly expensive. Very, very interesting. Yeah, some good stuff there. At Weirdian Tales, I think they go and do, uh, they tour. Um, so uh, look up Ed Weirdian Tales. These are some of the uh, authors who were there. Some of them have written some of their own books, been self published. And they're all, most of them are on hand. There's, there's Bob talking to that author there. I believe this is one of the organisers. I didn't catch his name, but um, they have their own range of anthologies and short story connections, uh, collections, that sort of thing. I um, mean, he also had a table of uh, really interesting secondhand stuff as well, which was good to see. There was CDs and audio books there, and fanzines as well. It's a good little mixture of uh, some second-hand stuff as well on the, on the table. And books and comics and mags. Recognise that one. It's uh, quite nice. I have actually got that one. It's a quite nice edition of that. And then uh, the table right next to them, uh, another uh, Tim Tim Mendes, a self-published author. I think I mean he'd done a talk as well, so he'd done a reading from his book and then some signings afterwards. Nice little range of merchandise. And there we are. If you want to follow up with anything that you've seen, or if you fancy picking these authors' works up, you can do. And most of them have got their own websites um, and ways to contact them through social media. And more here again. 
TM uh, Faulkner. So again, he's got his own website if you'd like to explore these a little bit more. Very well produced. And there was no shortage of horror and horror anthologies at this show. It was, uh, if that was your bag, absolutely heaven. And uh, Bob and I both commented uh, how lovely everyone was. Um, the attendees, the people with the stands, the, the organisers were fantastic. Um, the, you know, coming round at regular intervals, making sure we were happy, and you know, do we need another bottle of water and things like this? It was really good. Um, they kept us topped up with little bits of cake from the uh, the baking stand, which we'll see a little bit later. Um, we very much felt looked after, and that. Is unusual at a show um, and uh, certainly Bob said that he'd like to come back next year if possible if the dates are good yeah, Jack and Apps Press I said by this time pretty much everyone had set up so it was getting quite quite busy but um, the uh, the yeah, the general attendees hadn't got in, so I was zooming around and filming what I could before it got busy. I thought these were fantastic, these uh, hats there. How cool are those? <laughs> and there was definitely a few gone by the end of the day, so that she sold some. I thought they were fantastic. Excellent. The colours are brilliant. Very, very good. Yeah, so much to see, you know, even in a day. Um, there was a, quite a bit to get through. And um, as is often the case, you know, when one of the guests is talking um, or presenting, then the dealer's room tends to go a bit quiet. But as soon as they finish, it gets packed and busy again. And that's very much how it was uh, this time round. More great stuff here from this illustrator, she's an artist. Some cool art and stickers and what have you. There she is, Tony, with her contact details. Another beautifully produced book. I mean, it looks really, really professional. So um, I did see her selling some copies at the show. There she is, Willow Woods. Another little series here. Urban Fantasy. What this is classed as. There's some more great artwork here. Um, I thought Trilby Black, the yeah, author and illustrator. There's some good stuff, isn't it? High quality, this. Yep, very nice. Yep. Excellent stuff, trilbyblack.com. There we are, if you want to check that out. Yeah, Sarah's cat, yeah, Otto Ribbon. He was, uh, Otto was very friendly. He was there when we got there as well, just setting up his stuff. And those cats there, they look, real don't they but they're not they're actually not but they do look real <laughs> and here's uh, bob with the customer working out what to pay i forget this customer's name but we'd seen him at the zardos book fair um a couple of weeks prior to this nice to see him again
Now this is in the uh, the room where the speakers were, so this is slightly uh, different to where the other dealers were, but this was like almost like the overflow. So there was some more authors here, and uh, they were signing on their tables. Now she is in costume as well, <laughs> Alexandra Beaumont, and they uh, they had their fans. There's people there signing signing copies of their books. And Simon Bleakham. So plenty there. If this is your thing, there's plenty there to dip your toe into and try and experiment, which is great. Just next to the store, there was a, a store with some fantastic comics, but they're a little bit too adult, even on the covers. For me to show them on YouTube, the whole thing would have just been a, uh, would have been censored out, but uh, they were good all the same. But sadly, I, I just got no way to actually share those on this uh, child-friendly channel, I'm afraid. So it wasn't deliberate by any means. Um, I just, uh, the covers and what have you were a little bit too risque. And then uh, we had a fantastic uh, a couple of guys come in and they shared their collection of early Arkham House stuff and, and Lovecraft books. It was uh, really fantastic, you know, early first editions and what have you. Very, very nice to see. These weren't for sale. These were literally just for display and they were talking about the different printings and what have you. Very, very nice to see these rarities in the flesh. As you can see, it's real, real good stuff there. Early Arkham House stuff. It's amazing. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, good of them to bring that in. Here's our... Uh, Bake Off champion, at least I think she should be, with that fantastic cake. And uh, just to finish off, um, at the end of the day, or towards the end of the day, um, Charles Stross came round the dealer's room and um, Bob being Bob said, oh, Charles, since you're here, would you mind signing up my stock? Because you never know when you're going to meet Charles again. So it was uh, Bob took the opportunity to get what stock he had left. Um, and he brought every Charles Stross book that he had with him. Um, he took the opportunity to get it signed up. And Charles was more than happy to oblige, which is great. So once again, if you couldn't make the show, but you'd like a signed Charles Stross book, you now know where to get him from Dorset Bob, Mr. Book 451 at Outlook.com. So once again, both Bob and I would like to thank the organisers. It was absolutely fantastic, a really good atmosphere. Um, as I said, as a dealer, you felt extremely well looked after. Um, the customers were very friendly, the other dealers were very friendly, and the guests were friendly. What more could you really want? And easy access to load and unload your car. I mean, it was like a dream a dream show until our journey home back to Dorset Bob's when um, we got caught in a couple of uh, you know, sort of accidents and traffic jams on the road. So, uh, But that's that's the luck of the draw. Nothing to take away from in some of the literary festival, which was nothing but a success. So um, they are, of course, planning it next year. So do check out their website. I'll pop a link in the description down below. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of the show. Thanks to everyone who came by and said hello and was so supportive of the channel. If you've not subscribed already, do please hit that subscribe button. It's completely free. And uh, I will look forward to seeing you again very soon with another video. Bye.